Now this is, I believe, my third or fourth video on pointers, and I'm going to show you uh, some more things we can do with pointers. I hate to use the word advanced, because it's not advanced, it's just stuff you haven't seen before. Unfortunately, pointers seem to be a point of confusion for new C++ programmers, and, and I think we turn on this mind block like it should be hard, but it's really not that hard. It's straightforward, just just bear with me, and, and please don't, don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. So I'm going to make an int, my int, assign it 9, and then like I've done in previous videos, I'm going to make a pointer. My int pointer gets the address of my int. And so when I see out star my int pointer in line, um, that will print 9 because it's pointing to the value 9 out in RAM. See here, we have the 9. Okay, so I think what's more interesting though, instead of printing what the pointer is pointing at, is actually look at, hey, what is the actual address stored in my pointer. Remember, a, a, a pointer a pointer is just an int. Right? It's a four byte address out in memory somewhere. Stack, heap, static area, whatever it is, doesn't matter. It, it simply stores a four byte location. And that location I can use to, in, in RAM on my box, we can go to the location 0032FAE4hex. And f out there we will find that the compiler decided that's that that piece in memory, the compiler combined with the operating system determined that that piece of memory uh, represents my int. And it just so happens that I wanted to store 9 out there, so it's stuff to sign out there. So that's all a pointer is. Now, something interesting about pointers, though, is right now I'm pointing to a single int here. Well, I can have my pointer point to an array of ints. So let's make new, let's make an array of, of 10, no, let's keep it simple, let's stay Five, five elements. So my end pointer points to an array that's out on the heap, out on the heap uh, of ints. Now, just because I want you to gain good habits, I'm going to delete my pointer, my int pointer, when I'm done with it. But one thing, though, when you're pointing to an array of elements, which you need to be aware of, there's different syntax for that. Delete like this. And yes, there's different meaning, and it's important to be explicit, otherwise your program could have some undefined behavior. All right, so so now my pointer prints, uh, points to five, five array elements out on the stack. So let's, for int i get zero, i less than five, i plus plus, I'm going to see out my int pointer, and since it's an array-like structure, I can say sub i and line, and just pause the video here and think about what's going to print out. What's going to print out? Well, now let's look at what prints out. It's essentially garbage. We went and took some RAM up out on the heap area, but C++ doesn't initialize it for us. It doesn't do anything for us. It just says, well, here you go. Here's enough RAM for five ints. So, so it's garbage, all right? Um, let's do something more interesting and actually uh, set the values out there. So I'm going to say my int pointer sub i gets, uh, let's do i times 2. So it should go 2, 4, 6, 8. Run it. Down here we print it, right here we initialize it. Could do it in the same loop if we wanted to, but... All right, so, notice we still have the address here, because I'm printing out the address of my end pointer, and then we have 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, which is this loop right here. We're, we're basically walking down the array. But no surprises here, it's an array, you're used to this. Okay, so I'm going to delete this line that, that prints out the address here, and then um, we'll keep the initialization. But when you look at this brackets, the brackets... You know, in Java, we kind of abstract it away, and we say, hey, it's, it's brackets, it's an array, it's, it just goes and gets that element in the array. But you're in C++ now, and in C++, it's all RAM, it's just bits and bytes. So when you think of an array, you should really think of it as being a contiguous, meaning um, unbroken up piece of memory, and in this case, that unbroken up piece of memory is big enough to store five ints. And the important thing to know with an array, I use that word contiguous, it basically means one int follows the next. It's not like uh, C++ scatters them out on, around out on the heap. They're, they're contiguous. So the first element is at sub zero, and then if I look in memory right directly next to it, there'll be the next element, and memory next to that one will be the next element. They're contiguous. Okay? So since those memory locations are contiguous, I can do a little bit of magic with pointers. And it's not magic. I'm sorry I used that word. Don't let it do a mind block. This is pretty, it's straightforward. I'm going to for, I'm going to say int pointer p gets uh, my int pointer. 
So all that does is now p is pointing to the first location on this in this contiguous block of integers, just like my int pointer is. My int pointer stores that hex address we saw while well, we're copying that hex address into p. I'm going to say, well, p is less than my int pointer plus 5, and I'm using, these are magic numbers, I shouldn't be doing that, but, but basically my int pointer plus 5, well, my int pointer is a hex address, and when I add 5, when I add 5, it, it, well, it does a little magic. Let's, let's, let me just continue here, and then I'll explain it in a minute. So I'm going to see out star p and line. So, so hopefully pause the video and scratch your head a little bit and look at this code and think, what, what's, what's going on here? What's Jamie doing? And let me run it. And notice here, we, we still have this, this for loop here that subs into our array with the brackets here. And it goes 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, but then we have 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 again. And that is being produced by this pointer magic I'm doing in this for loop. Okay, so let me, let me, um, let's put the for loop aside for a minute. I'm just going to comment it out. Let me insert, whoopsie, I want to insert some lines of code here. I'm going to say, int starter p gets my int pointer. All right, and we're, we're going to do this. Uh, actually, I'm going to, I think we're done with this for loop here that's printing via the brackets. I'm going to comment that out as well, and I'll just put it, whoopsie, let me put it down here with this other for loop. Okay, so int star my p gets my pointer. And again, my pointer is just a four byte address somewhere out in RAM. I copy that value, that address, over into p. And then if I say c out star p end line, run that. And we get zero because that's what we stored out there <laughs> in memory. The zeroth item, zero times two is zero. Okay. Now, what's what happens when I say p gets p plus, whoops, plus one? All right. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to see out p, and then down here I'm going to see out p as well. And I'm going to put a breakpoint right here, and let's run up to that break. Okay. Look at look at what printed here. We we first get star p, which is zero, and then since I'm debugging, the font is smaller. Hopefully, you've turned the video up to HD so you can see this. But um, see out p. The address is zero zero seven seven four dd eight. Well, that's kind of a big complex hex number. Look at the last number here. It's 8. All right? So if I take 8, which is the last value in P, and I add 1, you would think that 8 would go to 9, because last time I checked, 8 plus 1 is 9. All right? But let me step, and then um, step over this print. Now I'm going to look at the value of P after adding 1. Oh, look, the debugger just gave it away. Hover over it. Well, let me print it so we have it here in the console. So instead of going to 8 to 9, it went 8 to C, which is 12. So instead of adding 1, it added 4. All right, so first law of pointer arithmetic. First law of pointer arithmetic. When you add 1 to a pointer, you're essentially adding, or any value. I could put 5 here, or 8, or 20, or whatever. When you add a value to a pointer, you're adding that value plus... The val plus the size of what's being pointed at. Well, p points to ints. So since p points to ints, the size of an int is 4, so it's actually 4 times 20. Because when I add one to a pointer, I, I don't want to go partially through an int. I want to go over to the next int. In this case, I have an array of 5. All right. So when I do p gets p plus 1, or more conveniently, p plus plus, I want to move to the next int in my array here. I don't want to move like halfway through another int. I want to move through the next int in the array. So so that's why, let's look at this loop again here that I did down here. That's why this loop works. As I say, hey, P, you're going to point at the beginning of the array, which is my int pointer. That's the same, same place that's pointing at. And then while P is less than my int pointer plus 5, okay, and what's, what's my int pointer plus 5 going to do? It's going to do 5 times 4 is 20. So basically, while p is not at the end of the array, let's increment p. Or I guess this this is, this happens after the loop body happens. But then I just go through and I say, well, p, what are you pointing at? p, what are you pointing at? p, what are you pointing at? And one by one, one by one, let's let's run this with the debug. Skip down to the the for loop here. So one by one, we go here. We get the console up. Oh, wrong one. Um, where's the console? It's right here. Okay, one by one, 
we print these values and we just increment over them. So 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, so on and so forth. We broke out because p eventually became the same value as my int pointer plus 5. So that's, <clears throat> that's pointer arithmetic in a nutshell. All right? Good. And delete the, delete the array and we're done.